Hi there, I'm Sonal Mehrotra Kapoor and today uh, we bring you a very special episode of Let's Talk Jobs. Now why am I calling it special? Because for the past several weeks actually we've been trying to put together something that brings out the human side of the layoffs. Every now and then now on a daily basis we pick up the newspapers and we look at how big tech companies are firing people left, right and centre. And it's just numbers. It becomes a habit. You look at these numbers every day and it feels like this is what the tech industry is actually going through. But have you noticed how very few people who actually got laid off have come out and spoken about it? Who are these people? Why were they laid off? How were they laid off? These questions have dominated my mind at least for quite some time. So we did some digging and found out that the reason none of the employees who've been laid off are actually coming out and speaking in front of camera or even giving out their testimonies except the basic stuff that you keep reading on LinkedIn and other places is because they have actually signed agreements with these companies that they will not give out these details. Their severance depends on fulfilling that commitment to their company. And for someone who's lost their job and perhaps doesn't know what is going to happen next to him or her or their family or their kids, etc. If that's the last straw that they're hanging on, they will obviously not betray it. So, in today's episode, we will tell you not who these people are, but what happened to them. We spoke with a couple of people who've been laid off, who all in the spirit of anonymity, they don't want to come on camera and they don't want to be named, but we really wanted the story to come out. So this is why we're doing this episode this time. Before we go any further, please remember to like, share, subscribe to the Money Control channels. I want to say, you know, up front, uh, that I take full responsibility for this decision. Um, you know, I'm the founder and CEO. I'm uh, responsible for, for the health of our, our company, um, for our direction, um, and for, for deciding you know, how we execute that, including things like this. And In the next uh, few minutes, I'm going to tell you three things that have happened with the layoff story that we are seeing unfold in front of us. Why did these layoffs take place? We'll discuss that. We'll also talk about how they were done. In the case of Meta, at least, there are lots of details now that we have. And thirdly, who were these people who were laid off? So let's uh, first begin with the why. All of us mostly understand it, but very broadly speaking at the moment, the tech industry actually is sort of seeing what happened during the pandemic to the other sectors now. We've, we've spoken about this in an earlier video as well. While the world came to a standstill because of COVID and the pandemic, the only industry that was boom, boom, boom and booming up, that was tech. And while others were laying off people, they didn't know how to deal with the pandemic and everybody was trying to find their feet. But once the pandemic got over, the effect of what others had felt back then perhaps hit the IT industry only then. But is it a man-made error? That is the question we've been trying to decode really. And a lot of people at the moment, including Mark Zuckerberg, come out to even admit very, very clearly that it is because they made wrong assumptions. They thought that the spike that they had seen in tech adoption would maintain, would continue, which did not happen. They all thought that, you know, when all of us were home in the pandemic, when you're partying at home, studying at home, working from home, all of that was happening and tech adoption was at its peak. They thought that's a habit that will remain, but that didn't happen really, right? All of us went back, traveled with more vengeance, ate out even more often during weekdays, right? Look at the same case with big edtech firms in India. Baiju's a classic example of that. Boomed during the pandemic because of the adoption that they saw with various schools and you know households, etc. And now people are back and the product perhaps. So this was one major reason why the layoffs actually are taking place and perhaps will continue for some time. This, of course, compounded by other factors on how inflation and economy on the whole is, um, you know, creating a havoc around with war, etc. It's a complicated time, but tech is taking the hardest hit because of the assumptions these companies made on how the world will be post-pandemic, which hasn't really turned out their way. 
But then next, next let's come to how the layoffs, which is a more problematic situation to actually think about. So, you know, when we spoke with a couple of these people who've been laid off, uh, they uh, and I, the first question that I asked them was that, okay, how did it feel? Because these are people from very small towns in India, small towns in Madhya Pradesh, in UP, in Rajasthan, who told me that when they got their offers from companies like Twitter and Meta, it was a dream come true. It was a life-changing experience for them. They talk about how when they left for their expatriation from India, it they got a hero's goodbye. Everybody came to the airport and, you know, their families and friends and everybody celebrated that they had really made it big in the world. They'd cracked that big tech company job that they'd always really wanted. And uh, that now, of course, with one email and layoff has come crashing down on them. There's one particular instance without naming the person, of course, and to ensure that uh, their identity stays uh, under wraps. They talked about how when it came to Meta, there were two articles that were published in the Wall Street Journal. One that mentioned that the layoffs were going to happen and the second that mentioned the exact date and time at which the layoffs will take place. So the Wall Street Journal came out with the article a week before the layoffs took place in Meta, mentioning roughly about how many people will be laid off at what time the email will come as well. Now that created real panic within the Meta ecosystem and people there, especially those uh, who were on, you know, expatriated jobs were constantly talking about it. And in Meta, there is a rule uh, or a culture of sorts where Mark Zuckerberg actually meets up once a month in an open town hall with all his employees and they're allowed to ask questions. So this question was raised, but there were wishy-washy answers given. The question was very pointed and clear that do you support, can you deny what the Wall Street Journal has proposed? Can you put it out for us very clearly if this is not going to happen? Do we still have our jobs, not have our jobs? Like what exactly is taking place? And again, the point was that, you know, it will never get to that. Or the question was, that's the last thing that really that is going to happen. But again, no clarity given by the company while the press and the media was out there. And guess what? At the exact same time, on the exact same day that the article had mentioned, the email came in everybody's inbox that they did not have a job anymore. So the press did get it right. And perhaps the, these big companies who are dream jobs for so many of us even today did not end up even communicating to their employees first. They just randomly got an email that this is going to happen. A lot of uh, people, in fact, this one person we spoke to who had uh, left from India and had joined Meta, uh, had joined Meta on an expatriated role. They also said very interestingly that, uh, so this person had been in the company for about six, seven months or so. And she mentions that uh, for the first six months, there wasn't any work. Like they went to this office abroad and caught up with colleagues for, uh, you know, casual chats and drinks and coffees and this and that, etc. But there was literally no work. That was the first alarm bell. But why were all these people constantly getting hired when there was practically no work? This also happened at a time when Meta had already announced a hiring freeze. So on one hand, there is a company policy that talks about a hiring freeze. On the other, they were still constantly inducting people and expats, which are expensive resources. So that's really, it's got everybody thinking and the employees who've been laid off are very angry, very upset with the fact that why did you continue to hire? When you knew, the company knew, you were giving statements about a freeze, you knew all was not well, why did you continue to hire? Second, on how the layoff, they feel extremely disturbed on how one fine day they just got an email, there was no communication and even and that email mentions everything. It mentions their severance, their insurance, what exactly are they going to get back and all of those things. But if you have a query and you just want to call someone and figure out what really is happening, there's nobody on the other side of the phone. There's an email that you have to write to. The word that she used was that uh, it felt like human resource had been left with no human touch the way they were fired. There's another couple 
who we spoke to again don't want to disclose their identity because you want them to get their severance and not violate any company policy in such a desperate time they said that you know the woman in the uh, in the couple she got a job and she got an expatriated job so the husband quit his job as well the spouse quit his job as well in india joined her there along with their kid they moved as a family took a big accommodation paid great rents relying on their big salaries that they were going to earn in dollars and guess what now both i mean the couple doesn't have their job the kid perhaps won't be able to have a future and get get no school there at least for now and the entire picture is looking really really grim for them as a family as a unit there was one person i spoke with who was speaking to me in a very small town uh, comes from i don't want to disclose their identity really and kept talking about how he had actually not even told his family he'd come back to india after losing his job but he hadn't told his family on how uh, he was feeling or perhaps the fact that he didn't have a job anymore so he goes into his room every day and fakes meetings and emails just because he doesn't have the heart to tell his family that he doesn't have a job anymore there are i mean that really shook me up and uh, it's just crazy imagine being in a room uh, sitting in your house every day uh, lying to your lying to your partner lying to your parents just because you just don't know how to deal with the whole situation and you are the primary breadwinner in the family that's the reason why you went abroad and took up this massive responsibility relocated yourself and wanted that big job in the tech firm so that is on how the layoffs really happened just to give you a glimpse of it the third thing is on who was actually laid off in meta at least what we found out after speaking to a lot of people and i want to stay this categorically there are no statistics out because none of these details have been shared by these tech companies for obvious reasons uh in the press but it looks like that a lot of so in meta what we figured out after talking to a couple of people was that if there are two levels if you were to imagine say two levels l1 and l2 on levels of people who were hired say in uh, in in the hr vertical in the tech vertical in design in other places etc the lower ranking ones have been fired it looks like as a pattern the senior ones have been kept what does that actually tell you that there is no pattern or there is no competence was not the reason for firing people there are people who achieved 200% of their targets and they've also been fired so the company didn't look into who's a good performer bad performer whatever they just went as a blanket slash and said okay these are the lower ranking ones and we'll have to get rid of them the question these people now are asking the same companies is that we didn't make these why did you hire us in the first place we didn't make the prediction that the world will continue to adopt tech the way they are adopting right now these decisions came from higher up why aren't red heads rolling there why aren't you seeing people being axed at the top level when these decisions came from there these are some hard uh, hitting questions perhaps we don't know when we'll get answers to at the moment so that's pretty much uh, the story that we wanted to share so far like again i so far these stories that you have heard or perhaps not heard have just been numbers 11000 people 4000 people this that but what happens to a family and individual after getting fired how do they cope in an environment like this how do they cope with their family from like one person was telling me from a hero i've become a zero there's another one who told me that their faith in these big companies is now gone which is really hard they said it used to be a dream to work for companies like meta twitter google microsoft this and that he's like he was so hurt with the whole process of and still not in not you know hadn't come to terms with what had really happened and he said i don't think i'll ever work for these big companies again you know you work for these companies keeping in mind that they'll take care of their employees that they have a, you know a proper plan of action in place it's not a risky job it's supposed to be a stable progressive job but they are saying that as a community they feel that once things are better once things have stabilized 
they wouldn't want to return to these big companies because of the way they've treated them right now. There was one another person. I'm just recalling it right now. They mentioned that severance has been talked about quite a bit. That Meta gave like generous severance. They took everything into account, but did they really? Because this gentleman was talking about how uh, he took up a house in a very expensive any place, be it Singapore, US. You will see that you know rentals, etc., very very huge there, and you sign lease. That lease has a lock-in period. And now that you've lost your job and you have to go back, you're the contract that you sign makes it mandatory for you to pay the rent for those many months. So you might have lost your job four months later, five months later, six months later, but you've got to pay for the full 12 months. And a lot of severance is going only there. What are you left with? How do you even manage your tickets back? How do you even manage, especially when you have kids at home and you have elderly that you're taking care of? How do you cope with all of it? These are some questions that have been haunting me since the time I've heard these uh, these, <laughs> I don't know whether to call them stories or not, these these hard-hitting testimonies of people who've been laid off and we've spoken to a handful of them. They're all around us and they're really struggling at this point. So the reason for doing this video was to really get that story out even though we can't put their faces just yet. But we looked at their papers, we checked all the email exchanges that they had, we checked, we saw their rent agreements, we verified everything and now we're telling you a story they cannot afford to say at the moment. That's it from us. Uh, if you like this video, please uh, share it. If you also think you are in a certain capacity to help these folks who've come back now or are struggling to come back, do let us know as well. We'll be happy to put you in touch and do anything to really help those because the hardest hit are the ones who went abroad. Hardest hit are the ones who sort of left behind everything and just had to go there, invested in their future and it all came crumbling down because of that one email that changed their life. That's it from us. Thanks for watching.